But Some people need medication and it helps them. Other people don't, you know. I didn't. I definitely needed help and I still need help. But medication does not work for me. I found something that does work and it's therapy. And, and it took me 20 years to find a decent therapist to help me. And how did I do that? I paid for it. Because the system didn't help me and it failed me. And the system fails a lot of people. And if it do, even if this, even if the system does help you in some way, and it didn't help me, but even if, if even other people who will tell you the system did help me, they still went through so much trauma in the system and hell, and there's mistakes that that they're still going through a lot of the same things I went through and were abused in the system because it took all that for someone to get them on the right medication, you know, or to understand them or to. You know what I'm saying? So it's traumatic going through an institution or a jail or a system. You're already traumatized and misunderstood and there's already something afflicting you and you've already been in pain. So you have this whole, you have all these problems in this life before you end up in a hospital and, and then there you are abused or misunderstood to some degree and traumatized. Just the fact that you're walking out off the street into a hospital for a night, an, an emergency room, or a hospital stay for two weeks, and you don't have your things, and you're in gowns, and you're, you, maybe you haven't slept f for a while, or you, your your thoughts are already, you, so you're you're in a vulnerable position. So if you're if you if you're in a vulnerable position already, and then someone's not talking to you like a human being, or just treating like a human being, saying, "Would you like some, a glass of water?" or "Here's a blanket," or "Have a seat," you know. Would you like to sit down or what's bothering you? If someone's just, you know, talking to you like shit and uh, demanding answers and grilling you for your history in a really, you know, a ver in a very cold way uh, and, and, and is only concerned with writing a diagnosis and writing their, their prog and writing a uh, their notes and send and then off to the next person. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a the first thing, the first thing you have to realize, I I didn't stay being a counselor, but I went through a counseling program. The first thing you learn is that first meeting with someone is gold. Because if you don't meet someone the first time and show and, and show compassion, and you can tell if someone cares about you enough, if you don't, if you don't create a sense of of safety for somebody in the first meeting or in the in the place that you're in or just one on one with someone, you've lost your patient. You've lost them. You will you if you don't gain somebody's trust, you do not have a rapport and a relationship, and you're not able to help that person. So if you're not going to come off like you care and sincerely care and know how to talk to someone like a human being with a calm, steady voice, when that person's up here, you have to be down here as the professional. If someone's up here, you have to be down here. You have it's your job to calm somebody down and to know how to talk to someone like a human being and to try to help them because every answer is not here's a fucking pill or here's a shot in your ass that's how I'm gonna do with you you know or let me put the handcuffs on you before I even have a conversation with you you know because you know let's let's we're we're, we're stigmatized so you know, I'm going to put handcuffs on you before I even ask you what your name is. I'm going to assume you're dangerous before I even meet you. I'm going to read your chart before I even have an opportunity to meet you and see what you're like. I'm going to read your chart and have this bias against you right away, you know? And half of that stuff in these charts are made up anyway. There was one point I was on a ward in Creedmoor. And the do uh, I was transferred from one ward and then back down to another. And my psychiatrist was a really nice guy. He passed away. But he said, I'm not supposed to read you what's in this chart right now. But I am because I don't believe it. It says here that on the 13th floor, you slept with every single man on the ward. Every single patient. And he said, I can't, I can't believe this is written here. I don't believe it. You were my patient before you went to the 13th floor. And that's when it hit me what people are writing in these charts and how that can really taint and really solidify who you are in terms of getting help in terms of society and right away some some woman or some woman psychiatrist someone decided to write this in a chart they had no there's no facts behind it whatsoever nothing whatsoever it is made up in her head 
made up in her head from, from I don't know where. Her own issues, perhaps. And it's in this chart. And that's the first time I heard a doctor sit down and tell me, I am not supposed to read what's in here. And this is what it says. Wow. And you are my patient. This is not you at all. And I'm sorry that happened, but it's out of my control. And now you're being sent to the long-term building. And you're not suicidal right now. I don't know about how this happened. And as it was happening and they don't tell you what's going on, they don't... They scare the hell out of you because your mind and your fears play like the worst case scenario. So if someone's like, okay, we have to go now. Let's go. We're going. Oh, what's going on? Be quiet. Are you going to be... You're going to be shot up. Take this now. We're going now. It'll be explained when you get there. Imagine someone coming in right now and saying, you have to go such and such this place, whatever, and you have no say. You can't even ask a question. And, and, you, and you, can't, you can't argue the point. You can't fight. Because then it looks like you're being problematic and you get labeled resistant and problematic and non-compliant. And now you're shipped off. And now I'm shipped off. And the whole time the doctor who was ta telling me this in the office, they're telling him he has to go. They're telling this guy he has to go. And he's standing there with empathy saying, I'm really sorry, Susan. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know why this is happening. With what's going on? Uh. I will try to get back to you. He's not going to get back to me because now he's in this building and I'm in another building and I'm transferred off to another doctor. And he's the same doctor in the hallway years later when I'm visiting Eason in the hospital that said to me, I remember meeting your parents. He was in the elevator. And he goes, how you doing? I was like, I'm good. I'm visiting my boyfriend. He's here. And he's like, okay. And then, you know, years later, after that he passed away, but... He said, uh, what I meant, out of nowhere, it's silence in the elevator with me and him. I don't know, maybe he felt like, oh, I, you know, this happened and she angry with me that I couldn't stop it. And I wasn't. I was really happy to see him because he was good to me. You know, one of the free pe few people that was good to me. And he said, uh, he had his head down. I remember that day when we met your, when I met your parents in the room, in the visiting room. And, and uh, I just, just, I can see this is why you ended up here. I can see this is why uh, this is your parents are crazy. Your parents are crazy, you know. He could see, but in that visiting room, I'm surprised he could see it because in that visiting room, I distinctly remember my parents getting me upset, and my reaction was, "Oh my God, I want to jump out of a window," and I said that. And for a psychiatrist to hear that in a state hospital, it would almost feel like what he should be thinking is. This bitch is crazy. <laughs> she ain't never get out of here. I'm sorry, Mr. So-and-so. Uh, let me try to help your daughter and put her on something else. Sorry she's putting you through this, which is what I usually hear from psychiatrists. Look at what you're putting your mother through or your father through or your family. Look what you're doing. You're a bad person. You're a bad girl, you know? And instead, this one doctor, even after that experience, sees me in the elevator and says, He can see that this is <laughs> driving me nuts. You know what I mean?